Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Ray Adridi. I'm the CMO of Automation Anywhere. It is my pleasure to welcome you to our first ever Intelligent Automation Day. So we've gathered some minds here uh, today to unpack some innovations that we've been busy working on for the last uh, few months since our last product launch in October with A2019. And we also have some exciting uh, product announcements and demos we'd like to share with you. So I know there's about, about 10,000, I believe, of you online today. And I know you'll be busy tweeting, uh, posting uh, on social. And so if you are active, uh, make sure to use the hashtag IA Day, not AI Day, IA Day, even though the two are going to be very linked today. Uh, so we have an exciting agenda to share with you today. Um, we have our first uh, speaker who will be uh, Mihir Shukla. He's a founder and uh, CEO of Automation Anywhere. And he's going to be talking about the state of the industry and his point of view uh, around intelligent automation and how it empowers uh, the modern enterprise to be more competitive uh, today. Then we have a product demo in chief, uh, Abhijit Kakandiki, uh, who's going to be talking about you know, the product, show you uh, how the product works and some of its best features and capabilities and how you can take advantage of this. And then we are fortunate to have two great guests with us today. The first one is Matt Vasey from Microsoft. He's a senior director of artificial intelligence. And he's going to talk to you about how Microsoft is infusing AI into business processes and how uh, together both Microsoft uh, and Automation Anywhere are partnering to uh, innovate for you. And then lastly, we're fortunate to have Lee Patel uh, from uh, ADM. Uh, they are one of the largest a food processing company in the world. And he's going to talk about his personal experience, how excited he is about automation and his journey and the impact that he's had. And so hopefully share some lessons that would be useful to you. So again, we have uh, a packed uh, hour ahead of us. I hope you are as excited as I am. And with that, I'd like to welcome our first speaker, Mihir Shukla. Hello to all, and welcome to the Intelligent Automation Day. We call this an Intelligent Automation Day because what we are going to talk about today goes far beyond traditional RPA, including some groundbreaking technologies that you will see for the very first time. We also continue to believe that AI should power every step of the automation because uh, that allows businesses to maximize their ROI, and it is the secret sauce that, that, that will continue to enhance the business, uh, business outcome. Now, many of you know Automation Anywhere very well, and you have heard me say this before probably, but it is worth reminding everyone why RPA is such a fast-growing category. The simple truth is that the traditional business software, ERP and IT systems, have promised to automate all processes, HR processes, finance processes, supply chain processes, processes in every vertical industry. But at the, after many, many years, the truth is only 20% of processes have been automated today. That left business with no other choice but to do the other 80% of the processes manually using thousands of people as bridges between applications. This is the promise of the RPA, to first time ever, ever being able to automate end-to-end -end processes or being able to solve a piece of the process, automate piece of the process that could not be automated before. Now at Automation Anywhere, from the very beginning, we have been committed to enabling the human intellect to achieve greater things. We are very passionate about it. Enable human intellect to achieve greater things by taking robot out of the people and put a human-like intelligence into the bot. That has been our focus from the very beginning, and it will remain our focus. Now, here is why this is so important for us, but more critical for our customers today than ever before. If you take a look, in, since year 2000, about 52% of Glo Fortune 500 companies have disappeared, many because of the digital disruption and change in business model. If you take a look at S&P 500, the average lifespan of S&P 500 companies have been dramatically reducing every, uh, every decade. 
S&P 500 used to be the stable company. This is the companies around which nations were built, no longer. Many of them are struggling even to survive. On the other hand, if you take a look at digital disruptive companies, the digital native companies, they seem to be disrupting every industry, industry by industry. They offer a superior customer experience, a better business model, a more instant response, instant results. So we live in this world of a very, very disruptive uh, technologies, disruptive business model, fast changing environment. How do all of, all of us, all customers and all of us, we plan for the future? How do we structure businesses that are future proof? What problems are we really trying to solve? I propose that the, the problem that we are trying to solve can be phrased in a single word. It is, the, it is called the digital enterprise challenge. Now, if you take a look at any businesses, regardless of the industry, this is how almost every business is structured today in silos. We have a front office environment that deals with customer engagements and customer experience. We have a back office uh, where we manage processes and optimize them and serve the needs of the front office. And we have all employees that, that, that connect to, uh, that, that serves us in a front and back office. So the reality of businesses today is that you have hundreds of applications in the front office alone, just managing customer experience and engagement. You have hundreds of applications in the back office, and you have hundreds of employee productivity uh, uh, applications. On average, an enterprise has about 1,500 applications, and they're all siloed. No wonder we are struggling to create a digital enterprise. Imagine an experience of the customer going through this uh, around 1,500 applications. So this is the area where automation anywhere particularly sh shines. Our vision for the future is a single platform that would automate uh, and integrate all applications in, front, in the front office, it will automate and integrate all applications in the back office. And with our productivity tools and connectivity to virtually all the large uh, employee productivity tools, it will allow employee to connect to front and back office applications in a seamless way. A single platform that bridges the silos between 1,500 applications. But it will take it even further it will eventually integrate front and back office together, creating a true digital enterprise. That is the vision of the future, the vision of where all businesses must go. Now, it, there has been a narrative that what about point solutions, the point, point RPA solutions that are designed for specific software or specific front office or back office. Our view there is absolutely clear. We do not believe that th that is a right approach because the point RPA solution will end up creating the very silos we are trying to break. It is that kind of thinking that got us in this place in the, in the first place. So we believe the single automation platform integrating uh, uh, is, is key to success. Now, you should always get started with a single process and from there grow into it. But knowing that you are future proofing your business is critical. We predict that the single automation platform will replace point RPA uh, products eventually. Now, let me talk about this in the context of a business process. Here is an example uh, of a, a code to cash process. Uh, it's a fairly complex process, but uh, believe it or not, this is the simple version of it. The actual process is even far more complex. This example has dozens of applications, hundreds of touch points, uh, many manual touch points, many exceptions. And the end goal of the business is to automate this process. Now, you can, as I mentioned, you can start with a start small, start with any, 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 any piece of it. But eventually, you must automate end to end process with a comprehensive set of technologies. You will need a single solution that includes front office technologies, back office technologies, human in the loop technologies, surface automation, and especially AI technology. Again, in the context of a business process, 
a single platform is a must to achieve a digital enterprise vision. Now, as Riyadh mentioned, last year we introduced in October our uh, new digital workforce platform, A2019. It is the industry's first cloud-native web-based platform that doesn't require any downloads. And you can create a bot in four minutes or less. For those of you, I hope you remember our demonstration in October last year. In this platform, we showcased how we combined this. It's a comprehensive platform that brought power of uh, intelligent RPA, AI technology, and analytics together, creating a single platform for end-to-end -end automation. But we are not stopping there. As I promised earlier, you will see some new groundbreaking technologies today. We started looking at the entire journey of automation and said, how do we create an environment where the pace of automation is accelerated? What are the current roadblocks in accelerating the automation journey? And what we discovered was about 80% of automation opportunity remains undiscovered. How do we solve that problem? How do we accelerate the process of discovering uh, automation opportunities? The second problem we noticed was that our customers were spending significant amount of time creating bots. And it was constraining their ability to, uh, to, to accelerate the automation journey. Gartner predicts that by 2023, about 50% of all RPA automation will be, dynamic, will be dynamically generated. We have a uh, surprisingly very good news for you. You do not have to wait till 2023. We are very pleased to announce, uh, in, for the very first time, a new product from Automation Anywhere. It is Automation Anywhere Discovery Bot. Now, this solution is designed to automatically discover processes, curate them, prioritize them, and with a click of a button, yes, with a single click of a bit button, it will also auto-generate a bot. And this entire platform is AI-powered. It will observe human, uh, 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 human actions. It will automatically learn from it, identify processes, based on how many times it has been executed, it will automatically calculate the ROI. It will help you curate them. And as I mentioned, with a click of a button, generate a bot. We call this automating the automation. We believe that's the future of, of, of intelligent automation. Let's take a look what automating the automation looks like. you get an idea of our vision for how we see the future, the automating the automation future, leading us to a uh, 
very continuous automation virtuous cycle. Take a look at this picture of how that virtuous cycle, cycle could look like. You discover processes, you automate them with the help of intelligent RPA and AI technologies, and then you optimize them with, uh, with, with analytics technology. But it is a continuous cycle that you keep going through it, like you saw in an earlier video, leading you to a true digital enterprise. And at the center of this, the, one of the key characteristics of this platform is all of our products are web-based cloud native architecture. That is extremely important because it allows it, it allows a much faster adoption. It allows it makes it easy for business users as well as IT and uh, IT users and developer. And it offers it scales better. It offers you lower total cost of ownership. Uh, and AI has to be central to all of these technologies. The, the amount of advancement we have seen in AI, why wouldn't you? You have to have AI built in, into the automation technology. Now, let me, uh, let me paint a picture of what the future of this automation journey may look like. I'll, I'll, uh, some, of us did, uh, some of us remember the Moore's Law. Uh, in 1971, Intel co-founder Moore's uh, defined this law that number of transistors in a given space would double every two years. In the last 50 years, this law in a way has defined and seen the amount of uh, transformation we have seen in the computing industry. Now, we have been in the middle of nearly 4,000 customers, transformations of every size, small, medium, large, and massive transformations, and across about 90 countries. So we've been looking at all the data from automation journeys, and we're trying to predict what do we see? What, are, what, what kind of patterns uh, do we see across the world? And our team has come up with a new automation law based on the data we have. It says the hours of work automated by software bot will double every 12 to 18 months. And we see a very clear sign of that. Now, now you connect this uh, behavior to the continuous automation uh, virtuous cycle. Every year you will automate about double the work of work and it will continue to happen. And in few years, you, your business will be far, far more automated than it is today. Now, before I hand over this to Abhijit, who will show us the product demo of the, uh, the new exciting products, let me leave you with a few thoughts. Uh, for customers who are on their automation journey, we believe that uh, these are the three must-have requirements for your automation platform. The first, as I mentioned, it has to be a single platform to avoid the very silos that, it, that, that led us to this point in the first place. You can start small, scale, but know that you are future-proofing your business with a single platform and a promise of a digital enterprise. Second, it has to be natively AI-powered because the, the amazing developments in AI, and AI can become your secret sauce because as you use AI-powered platform, AI will learn from your processes, your data, your system, and it will get better every time you use it. That is the right platform for you to have going in the future. And the last is it has to be web-based and cloud-native because it scales better. It is how all modern applications are built today. If, you, if anybody built an application today, that is how they would build an application. So it must have a, a cloud-native web-based architecture. With that said, I wish all of you a great success in your automation journey, and I would like to welcome uh, Abhijit on the stage. Thank you. Thank you, Mihir. <clears throat> so Mihir talked about our intelligent automation vision and how discovery is an important aspect of this automation. Now I'll show you our new product, Discovery Bot, the first AI-driven solution that discovers processes and with one click actually creates the bots to automate them. It is directly built on our industry-leading RPA platform, which increases the pace of automation up to five times. So let's consider a real business problem. 
where, uh, so when often when a vendor sends out an invoice, there's a significant chance that it will get rejected due to lack of supporting information. Now, since this can happen to a lot of um, uh, through to, to, to a lot of volume, uh, this could lead to significant payment delays and potentially create cash flow problems for the company. So let's see how Discovery Bot can help you identify such a process, help create an automation uh, opportunity, and then finally also even create a bot in a single click. So we'll first go to uh, a, a uh, uh, somebody uh, who is a process analyst. Um, and so Terrell uh, uses this discovery bot and creates a new discovery project. So Terrell then asks members of his uh, billing team to record their actions while processing these rejected invoices. So logs on to the product, quickly creates this uh, request uh, to, uh, for, for his team to send, send the recordings over, and he's done. So Rose is one of his team members, right? Um, what Rose does is she, she receives this, this invite and logs into the system and simply starts recording her activities. Rose reviews one of these rejected uh, invoices. So uh, <clears throat> in this case, what has happened is that the customer has requested a proof of delivery, uh, which happens to be a software license uh, report that is in Salesforce CRM. So Rose logs on to Salesforce. She downloads that generated um, uh, license report and sends it out. So after finishing this recording, Rose can actually uh, review the entire flow, including all the screenshots. She can actually annotate and add notes as needed, thereby documenting exactly what she did, uh, and submit it back. Now, Terrell uh, can now um, analyze not just Rose's recordings, but multiple recordings. So he receives this notification, goes into the product, and selects uh, and uh, sees what, what Rose has done, along with all the annotations, the notes, and so on. Terrell can also analyze multiple recordings here. So uh, just by selecting all of them, he actually can see the entire process visually and all the variations. So if, if different people on his team took different paths to reach the same end goal, he can actually see that. But furthermore, Terrell can also uh, get an aggregated view of, the, uh, of how long it took um, for, for, for each person, what was the average process cycle time, uh, you know, how many people do this every day, and so on. So <clears throat> in this, Terrell then notices that uh, you know, missing the proof of delivery is a very common reason for this invoice rejection. And so it's a great candidate for them to automate. So uh, he quickly selects this portion of the process and creates an automation opportunity by entering things like unit costs, uh, product save, uh, the um, uh, uh, potential savings, and so on, right? So, uh, once he does this, let's move on to Bruce, who is the RPA, uh, who leads the RPA COE. Now, what Bruce can do is Bruce can see an overview of all the automation opportunities right here, right? So this is across the different business units and teams and so on. So Bruce actually can then prioritize uh, them in, in any order by ROI, by savings, cycle times, and so on and click on any of these just to be able to review them. So Bruce then uh, reviews and prioritizes this, this list of automation opportunities. Uh, think of it as a automation roadmap right here in the product. He then can dive into any of the details and just with a single click, he can convert that automation opportunity into a bot. So now you see this just as any other bot in our standard bot creator. So the uh, bots creating bots has been a dream of ours, and today we finally turned this dream into a reality. So now Bruce can edit this bot as needed, just like any standard bot. Uh, he can now make sure that he can annotate it and he can make it more stable, secure, and you know be able to properly handle exceptions and so on. So he can then even deploy this bot to production. 
So Discovery Bot not only quickly revealed a hidden process, but also um, helped maximize, uh, but, but also uh, helped automate it instantly. You saw how COEs can actually use it to maximize their ROI and truly scale their RPA deployment efforts. We believe that Discovery Bot truly democratizes the scaling of your RPA deployments. And business users can now not only discover new processes uh, to, to automate, but also get the bots up and running instantly. And these bots can also serve as blueprints for IT and developers to tweak as needed. Imagine what a fleet of such discovery bots can do for your hyper automation efforts. Now, all of this is possible because we have leveraged our own native AI that uses deep learning and computer vision to understand human intent across applications of varying technologies. And what this has done is that this has made the discovery bot the most complete solution today that captures user activities, maps out patterns to visualize process flows, create automation opportunities so you can build a prioritized automation roadmap right here in the product, and even create bots automatically with a single click. So that was about the discover part. Let's move on to what Mihir referred to as the optimize part. So Mihir previously talked about shrinking the time from discovery to the bot creation. Right? So in the optimization part, we also want to focus on shrinking the time to make uh, uh, so to to even automate the subjective aspects of a business process, so our customers can further accelerate their processes. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, it's just the volume of these subjective actions that can lead to a lot of slowdown in the process. So let's take uh, let's let's go to a live demo of. Uh, of the product. Now here, I have a bot that actually automates the PO approval process. So um, as you know, PO approvals are part of the standard code to cash process. And uh, what happens is when you receive a PO, uh, you need to determine if, if, if the other company that has uh, placed the PO is in a position to pay for the goods that they order so that you can approve the PO and move on to the next steps. So essentially, you're doing a risk analysis here. Now, the risk of them uh, you know, uh, defaulting on, on, on the payment depends on several factors. And these could be the credit rating of the company, this could be their corporate debt, uh, you know their their overall payment history with you, and so on. In this example, we are actually automating the PO approval process by embedding an AI model, um, so that uh, you know we can evaluate the the risk of payment default. So, if the uh, the the way this bot works is that if there is a risk of payment default, it will uh, it will pass it on to a human for review. If it is under a, a, a certain threshold, it, it can accelerate the approval and uh, take the further steps. So let's walk through this board really uh, briefly before I run it. The first set of steps are actually looking at our own, um, are, are using our own IQBot product to be able to um, get the attachment, uh, get the PO attachment from, from the email and be able to uh, extract data from that, right? So you just upload the document to IQBot. Uh, IQBot then extracts the data from the PO, right? Now, uh, so this is, a, this is a, a great example of the native AI that is actually built into our platform, right? So the next set of steps are then actually to use this data to query several other systems. These could be the company's own systems with past payment history, or commercial data sources that can provide information on the company's financial standing. The results of these queries are then actually fed into uh, an AI model. And this AI model 
And this AI model uh, happens to be uh, Microsoft AutoML. So if I expand on that, you'll see that you know um, we are specifying the location of, of the data and uh, the uh, API URL uh, for, for the Microsoft AutoML AI service. And the output is stored in a risk factor variable. So you'll also see that there are two paths that the bot takes here. One is if uh, the risk factor is, is within limits, then it can actually uh, take the further uh, steps of uh, of uh, 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 placing the PO and all of uh, uh, of approving the PO uh, through SAP. Whereas if it is above a certain threshold, then it actually sends uh, the PO uh, to a human for review. Right now, because of our plugin architecture, we uh, you can actually infuse any of our bots with AI skills. So you'll see some great examples of here. Uh, from Microsoft to AWS to Data Robot to Google and so on. Any of these can actually be um, uh, quickly um, quickly uh, compiled as packages and they show up as command libraries in here. Right? Moreover, it is so easy to add, uh, add these AI skills uh, because you can actually package these skills using Java, which is the universal language uh, in which uh, 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 people actually write code today. So there are several AI skills, as, as you can see here. Uh, let's actually run this bot now. So as you see, uh, it is starting the run. The first step that it will take is, is uh, downloading the attachment from, from the email and then uh, passing it on to IQBot. So IQBot then processes that document and it will uh, extract data from it. So document has been sent to IQBot for processing. IQBot is working on it. There you go. So IQBot has now successfully extracted the data. And it is now using that data to query several different systems. And it is now calculating uh, the risk factor for each of these purchase orders. So in the first purchase order, looks like the risk factor, uh, the, the result that it is, uh, uh, it is uh, low risk. And so uh, in this case, the bot automatically approves it. For the uh, second PO, let's see what happens there. In this case as well, it is below threshold. So the bot is uh, uh, auto approving it, which makes the process go much faster. And now in this case, the risk is actually above threshold. What this means is now the bot actually sends this to a human for review. And uh, you know these are the gray areas that you really want uh, to to check out. So there you go. So the bot uh, uh, ran ran successfully. Uh, what we just did was we actually combined our own native AI with third party with AI skills that were built on top of third party AI components. And RPA and AI and both of these types of AI, by the way, worked very seamlessly to be able to accelerate your process. So this is what we call that entire optimized category. So uh, that, that uh, uh, ends my demo here. Uh, now to talk about various Microsoft AI services and how they're making the world of automation better is Matt Wasey. Welcome, Matt. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. So thanks to the Automation Anywhere team. Thanks, Mahir and Avijit, um, for the, the opportunity to talk to this audience today. Um, I, I'm really excited about um, Automation Anywhere and the work we're doing because you know, ultimately, we're natural partners together. We, we share a common passion and a commitment about enabling our customers' digital transformation. So that's a kind of a core, core basis for our partnership. 
this new process discovery capability that Avajet provided uh, visibility and did a live demo on, we think will drive a significant reduction in the complexity that our customers experience as they try to implement automation. Additionally, we think it's going to open up automation to a whole new set of partners and customers who previously were not able to take advantage of it. So, you know, this, this is a, an exciting time for automation, and we think, feel that the, the combination of Azure's scalable computing power, the democratization of AI with our cognitive services, combined with Automation Anywhere's advanced capabilities, um, is opening the door to a whole new set of kind of human and people-centered experiences that are going to transform the world of work. And so when we, you know, kind of look forward at the, the future of the world of work, um, we see this work will be, we think this work will be pivotal when we look back at it. Um, the other kind of basis for our partnership is our view of the world of automation and where automation fits uh, into the world. So, you know, we clearly are in a world that is continuously being transformed by automation. For hundreds and hundreds of years, automation has been changing the way we work. Um, this work was, has been traditionally in the industrial sphere focused on dirty and dangerous work on the factory floor. And that's when you think about factory automation and automation, that's where people think. Today, we are seeing the rise of cognitive workplace that is driven by AI and AI-powered robots. And this here, this is a trend that we see coming and continuing for many years. Um, these new robots are now focusing on digital work and digital tasks and freeing up humans. And so one of the kind of core principles about how we think about automation is that AI, automation, and RPA ultimately is going to augment humans in the workplace um, rather than replace them. And so that's kind of a core, um, a core area of agreement between our two companies. Um, the other thing which we think is that embedding AI cognitive services into this platform um, in a drag and drop way really unlocks a huge amount of value for our customers. Traditionally, AI has been difficult to go and do. You need data science, and you need a huge amount of, of you know, technical resource to go do that work. And, and cognitive services, we think, unlocks and democratizes AI, and Automation Anywhere is using this to great effect. Um, so when we think about cognitive services, you know, Microsoft's been a leader. We've done 20-plus 20, 20 years of research in how do you create cutting-edge cognitive services like AutoML. Um, this market-leading research that has had human parity first in a number of areas, coupled with our scale compute and enabled with APIs is the, is the we feel, the secret sauce to unlocking the power of AI. And so when we think about um, cognitive services, we look at it in four key areas. First, decision. And so you heard uh, Avajit talk about AutoML as a key, uh, key component of their solution. Um, we think auto ML, anomaly detection, and these decision components make software products more aware and more intuitive and, and also more adaptive to users' needs. And you saw that the decision process is a key thing where it's making, making humans better and faster. The second area is speech. We've done a tremendous amount of research in the speech arena, you know, being able to convert human speech into computer-readable text, taking that text and being able to communicate back to humans in a way that they want to communicate. And then finally, um, being able to translate text or, or translate speech from one language to another really breaks down the barriers between cultures and countries and enables us to work better together. And finally, language understanding, when coupled with speech, allows us to take this computer-readable text and turn it into human intents that can then be, you know, uh, create actions. And we, in our homes today, many of us will have virtual assistants, and those virtual assistants are the coupling of speech AI and language understanding to create usable, um, usable um, interfaces. And we think the next phase of interfaces will be speech. And we'll, I, I'll, I'm teasing a little bit. There's an integration we're working on that will have speech in it uh, that we're working on with automation anywhere. And then the final one is vision. Vision is, a, is the kind of the obvious um, connection to RPA with you know, APIs like Microsoft Read, uh, which you know, converts uh, scanned text into machine readable text. Ink recognizer that looks at handwriting and is able to convert handwriting into machine readable text, and forms recognizer that unlocks the complex forms of our lives and makes them readable by machines. So this is um, kind of the cognitive service um, kind of view or tableau that we think about. Um, we think by making it simple for businesses to take advantage of AI and scalable compute, combined with great tools like Automation Anywhere, um, we are uh, our, we put our customers in a great position to kind of out innovate out-compete and outscale their competition. And so the companies that move quickly 
and early to this technology are the ones that are going to be able to win. So this is a game changer, we think, and frankly, is part of the reason that we're so excited about this partnership and the potential of this partnership in the future. So um, to just talk a little bit about the partnership. This past year, we've come a long way um, in the build time frame. Uh, we, talked, uh, we talked a lot about uh, Automation Anywhere choosing uh, Microsoft's Azure platform uh, as, the, uh, as its preferred cloud. And so that uh, Automation Anywhere customers could run the Automation uh, Anywhere platform in our cloud, in public, uh, in public cloud, in private cloud, and basically run it anywhere. And that was a big, uh, a big announcement in our partnership. The, the second, in November, Automation Anywhere made announcements around the expansion of artificial intelligence offerings um, in the combination with um, their IQ bot combined with our cognitive services and launched 150 pre-built bots that are speeding customers' time to automation. So that's exciting progress over the last year. A concrete example of this is um, the, the integration we did with Microsoft Excel. And Microsoft Excel uh, is one of the common uh, interfaces, Office 365 is the way that the majority of information workers work on a day-to-day -day basis. And by integrating, um, by integrating automation into this interface, we change the way that people do work, and we ultimately reduce the barriers to adoption of automation. So we're, we're excited about this. Over the next year, we have a lot of joint activities that we're planning. Um, going to market together, um, building additional technical capabilities, um, and we're really executing across three core pillars. The first pillar is build with, so we're building with uh, Automation Anywhere, develop new technical capabilities based on Microsoft's scalable cloud uh, and Microsoft's cognitive services, and in fact, right across our three clouds. Um, the second area is going to market, really getting out into the market to tell the story together about the power of automation and how that can change customers' business and transform the way they do work. And then finally, co-selling, where our field organizations get together and go out and help customers understand how they can start that transformation today. And so um, Automation Anywhere is a co-sell ready gold partner. And so we'll be taking them along with our teams on a 20 city, uh, 20 city road show um, across the company, uh, country to showcase the solutions that we've built, focused on industries like financial services, healthcare, and the life sciences. Um, so that's kind of the work we're doing. On the build with, um, we're really excited um, about the, the Teams integration that we're working on. So we will soon have integration with Microsoft Teams that will allow users to launch bots out of Teams in the same way that they can today launch out of Excel. And we'll, we'll see um, additional deepened integration um, with you know, our AI cognitive services like Microsoft Read and Forms Understanding. So we continue to be super excited about the automation field in general and the potential. Um, we see automation anywhere as a natural partner and we've had a huge amount of progress in 2019, and we are looking to great things from the coming year. Now, the, the next, um, oops, I've done that twice now. Uh, the next phase um, of this, I want you to hear from a customer. And so I'm uh, pleased to announce uh, that we have uh, Lee Pastel, uh, Patzel from um, ADM, Archer Daniel Midland, uh, who will talk to you a little bit about his experience deploying uh, and implementing RPA and, and getting some of the benefits that we talked about. So. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Mahir. Thank you to the entire Automation Anywhere team for the opportunity to share with you my RPA journey uh, or our RPA journey um, as, as we've progressed. It's something that I'm very passionate about and love to talk about, so I'll try to temper uh, the additional excitement of all these announcements um, in the Automation Anywhere space. A little about Archer Daniels Midland, ADM. We're, we're a global leader in human and animal nutrition. We're the world's premier agricultural origination and processing company. And from the seed of an idea to the outcome of a solution, we are enriching the lives the world over. We do that through 40,000 outstanding associates across the globe that work in over 300 locations that help us generate over 60 billion in annual revenue. We've also had the privilege of serving the world for over 100 years. So we're a very old company uh, and so are some of our processes. Every journey has with it some challenges and the RPA journey is not special. And as much as I'd like to think that some of these challenges that I'm gonna share with you are unique to us, unfortunately they are not. 
many of you out there will uh, resonate with some of the challenges that I talk about and have either experienced or will experience some of these challenges. Any company that's been around for a while and has grown through acquisitions knows some of the heartaches of multiple ERPs. And when it comes to automation, having the data and information that needs to talk between those ERPs can pose a challenge with automation. Even if you didn't have that challenge or in addition to that challenge, you're gonna have hundreds or thousands of applications needed to support the processing of your transactions. Uh, you heard me here talk earlier about all the applications, front office, back office, that's true. But that, those were just package applications that he was talking about. In our world, as I've seen, applications can be something as common as a very elaborate spreadsheet that somebody has built over time or some .NET application that somebody built to help speed up part of the process or make it more efficient. And those accumulate over, over time as they get deployed. In addition to that, we have variations within processes that we believe are pretty defined. So if you think about just making payments for an invoice, how it happens in Germany for our company may be different in how they process it in Idaho and different than they play a process in Brazil. Because of localization or compliance or regulation, there may be additional steps and so they do things differently. Or there may be limitations in the technology we've deployed. And so they try to overcome those with different things as well. On top of that, we historically, as I've worked for many different companies, uh, observed that we don't really have great visibility into our, how our processes should or are operating. We don't have great documentation. They're either poorly documented or they're wonderfully documented somewhere and people don't know where they're at and we can't find them so we can't share them. Or in a lot of cases they exist, we find them and then the created date is a year old and so we don't trust it so we create it again. Uh, one of my dreams before the end of my career is to see us stop drawing processes. The data exists and the technology exists for us to use that data and have the data tell me what is actually happening. That is what I can take action on. Somebody's belief of what is happening or dream of what should happen doesn't allow me to take action because then I still have to couple it with what is actually happening to measure the difference, right? Um, and so, so my dream is one day, just let the data, let's spend all that time and money, frankly, we pay external people to come in and watch us and draw our document, our processes. All that can be spent on analyzing and fixing our processes. That's my dream. Um, we also have a lot of document-centric processes. If you think about processes over time, they're generally created around documents. Think of employment applications, think of contracts, think of uh, invoices, purchase orders, what have you, uh, delivery notes. These were all a uh, mechanism to capture data from one person and share it with another person. And oftentimes the variation of how those documents are formatted present a challenge because they were created for the human eye. They were created for a person to look at and say, oh, it's pretty. <laughs> uh, and, and to be able to read with human eyes easier and interpret the data but people get creative with the format. So as we all seen, invoice number could be here, could be here, could be there, could be there, could be grayed out with a nice border, could have a pretty pink logo on it, whatever, right? So the, the variations of those documents pose a challenge. All these challenges together make our ability to get from idea to solution, time to value, longer than what we would like. And one of the challenges that that poses is the growth of opportunities, the count of opportunities is growing exponentially, but we aren't able to resolve those at the same pace, to keep pace in the ever-changing business climate. And so that is posing a challenge for us. And so that's even why I'm even more excited to hear some of the announcements, which were a surprise to me today. Um, and so I'm excited to get started with those, and I'll be talking with Habaji later on how to get, get in on that uh, early. But these challenges, uh, do, don't mean that we're stuck. So we've overcome some of these challenges. Many of you over there uh, that are watching have overcome some of these. And what you see on the list is just a, a fraction of the number of automations that have been created. Uh, but they're, they're a representative of the different types of automations that we've been able to uh, create and provide value and capacity back to the organization in spite of some of those challenges that we have. 
Um, one in particular that I want to highlight is the PDF document maintenance automation that's on the, in the right-hand column down towards the bottom, and only because it really highlights some of the value that gets returned back to the organization. Uh, in this example, uh, we get a uh, very long uh, PDF document uh, from our partners, from many partners, and our, our partners are gracious enough to take uh, a dozen invoices and stitch them all together for us in one nice uh, document and send them to us, but unfortunately our technology is unable to process those because it recognizes it as one. Uh, and so a person goes in and unstitches, if you will, all those documents and puts in uh, separator pages and then saves it back and then allows our technology to uh, to handle that. So we created an automation that did that, right? You can imagine that's a pretty unfulfilling task, right? Think about way back in the day, a stack of papers, and you're just flipping through and then inserting something right in the middle. So digitally, that's basically what was happening. That one automation alone has been able to return 400 hours of capacity back to the organization a month. And if you think about that as a worker, they get to do way more human things in their day now uh, with creativity, intuition, judgment, right? Things that are they're inherently human. The other thing I want to point out is on this list, a common theme is data entry. A recent article that I read on LinkedIn, uh, there was a study commissioned uh, and that uh, surveyed a bunch of office workers and it said the number one hated task by and large, not even close, was data entry. Uh, and so it's not uh, surprising that a lot of the requests and opportunities that come in re are related to data entry and avoiding that because, again, not, not significant value add for a human to do that. Where is the journey now? The journey has only just begun, uh, but I've been able to be fortunate enough to be a part of two separate Fortune 500 companies and starting their RPA programs, deploying both RPA and IQBot. This has led to, to this, is, this is a journey that's been a little over two years for, for me. Uh, and we've been able to successfully deploy over 100 automations, return 15,000 hours of capacity back to the organization, and, and been able to calculate over $1.5 million worth of savings uh, through that journey. And with the announcements today, I'm even more excited to continue that journey. And I can't wait to see what we can deliver back to the organization. Thank you. Thank you. thank you, Lee, and uh, I think you're as excited as I am, maybe more. So thank you again, and congrats on all the success. So I know a lot of you are probably uh, wanting to know, you know, how do I get my hands on the product uh, and, and all that. So I invite you to join us at what is now the largest gathering of RPA mines uh, in the world at these four locations here in London, Vegas, Tokyo, and Bangalore, where you'll be able to learn more about the product, probably get your hands on it. Uh, and so on. So I invite you to register. And uh, we also have digital workforce summits going on uh, in about 10 cities around the world. So check out our website uh, for a location near you. But uh, again, we'll look forward to seeing you there. So with that, I'd like to wrap this day by uh, letting you know that you can continue the conversation. I'm hearing that it's busy right now, uh, lots of tweets and lots of uh, social posts. So thank you for that. You can continue the conversation uh, throughout the day. And we're here to obviously answer any of your questions. So. I uh, would like to thank all of you for joining us today. Hope it was useful and hope you learned something. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Thank you.